So hello and welcome to video three in the series on VBA collections. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at reading from a worksheet into a collection and then reading from a collection to a worksheet. This is what you typically do when you when you have like a collection and you're using it in Excel VBA, you're typically going to read data from a worksheet. So it's important to understand how to do it. So you can see on the screen, we've got a worksheet here and our worksheet has just a simple list of students and their marks. And what we're going to do is we want to read all the students into our collection. And these are students that have a mark that's greater than 70. So the first thing you want to do when reading through, through some data on a worksheet is to get the range. So we do get the range. So we declare a range variable like this. And then we simply set the range variable to some range on the worksheet. Now the worksheet we're using is sheet marks B. So we're using what we call the code name of the worksheet, which gives us back a worksheet. And then we're using the range. And then we say A1. And we say, just give us back all the records that are adjacent to A1. And we use the current region for this. So how the current region works, very simple. If you're in Excel itself and you click on any kind on any data like this, and if you press control and asterisk, or what you can do is control shift and eight, which is the same thing, you'll see that it highlights all the adjacent data. So again, let me just click on say number eight here and control shift eight and it highlights everything. So this basically highlights all adjacent data. Now it splits the data by rows and by columns. So if there's a blank row and a blank column, for example, it won't highlight that data. So we'll go again, control shift eight. So you can see that it didn't highlight the data because it's separated by blank columns and blank, blank rows. Now, if for example, we just put something here, so, so you can see that B12 is no longer separated. It's actually adjacent data. Click anywhere and do control shift eight, and you can see that it includes that data. So that's what current region is. And when we use it with well-formed data in VBA, it's very, very useful for giving us back a range of data. Now, once we get a range of data, we can always read it like this. We declare our variable, and then we basically say for i equals two, and the reason we use two is because we don't want to read the header. So two, two, range.rows.count. And then next i at the end. So we want to check the number in the number of marks we want to check if the marks is greater than 70 so what we want is to get the actual cell so we get the cell like this we use range cells it's obviously i because it's the current number because we're reading through each row so it's the current whatever i is the current one and we'll look through this in a moment when i'm stepping through it and we want to use column two of the range because that is where the marks are and now once we have that, we want to say, we basically say, if the value in this cell is greater than 70, then, and we want to add it to our collection. So we do collection add, and what we want to add is the name of the student. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that in many cases, we don't have to use value like this. We can just use range cells like this and it gives us back the value and in a lot of cases it works fine but in this case it won't if we add like this it will actually add a range object of this cell it won't actually add the value so it's always good to use value or value 2 which is the more modern version if you want to read the value from the range now what we want to do then at the end we have a breakpoint here we're going to run the code and we'll stop on the breakpoint and we'll check if the collection has what we think it should so let's do a debug compile just to make sure we've no errors. And then let's run our code by pressing F5. And we went all the way to the end sub. So let's double click here. And we're going to take our collection and drag it into the watch window. And let's click on the plus to see what we have. And you can see that it has all the values that we required. So for example, it has Ray. Now if we just look in 
our data here you can see that ray is 88 the next one kirsten is only 60 so she shouldn't be included and then demetria should be included as 98 you can see demetria is included so all the way down we've included basically people that have a mark greater than 70. so a good way of testing our data often to, to make sure that we've got the right stuff is to print it out somewhere and so what we'll do is we'll rather than having the same code kind of thrown into all our different subs we create one sub that will do this task for us so in this one you'll see how we pass a collection to a sub so we have a sub and we we'll call it print collection and then to pass the value we simply say call as collection and that's how we pass it and then we do the normal thing we're going to just do a standard for loop or a for each loop i should say standard for each loop and we, we declare this as a variant and we say for each item in the collection debug print which prints it to the immediate window and then we do So now that we have the print collection, how we use it is by using call. So we do call print like this, and we pass call like this as an argument. Now we always do debug compile, make sure everything is okay. And let's bring up the immediate window, that's control G, or view immediate window. I'm gonna double click on the header here just to pop it out so that we can look at it right beside what we're doing. And I'm gonna get rid of this breakpoint so let's run the code and you can see that it printed everything out to the immediate window so very very useful the immediate window for testing our data because normally with data what we're doing is we're reading the data from somewhere normally a worksheet we're writing it out in a different format somewhere else and in between it's good to write what we have to an immediate window because the problem could be when we're writing out that we've written it to the wrong worksheet or so on so by writing it to the immediate window we can basically say the first part of our code is working correctly so now that we have the data and everything we kind of know that it's writing out correctly what we want to do is we want to write it out to our worksheet so we're going to write it out and what we can do is we can create a second sub. So rather than putting all the data here, we could have a second sub that says, write the data. So let me just go down and just get this up to the top of the screen. And this will write the data. And the same as below, it will take a collection as the parameter. Now we want to write to E1. So this is the position that we want to write to. So how we do it is again we just create a, we, we create a loop. We can do it in two ways, but we can just do a loop like this. And then instead of the debug print that we were using, let me just line these up properly. So instead of debug print, we want to write it out to a cell. And so again, we're going to use the, the thing that we did before. So she marks B and the we can use cells and it's going to be row whichever is the current row and it's going to be one and the value and we assign the value like this and that will place the value here now to start off we want to say row row equals one now this confuses a lot of people we want to we want to say we, we basically need to track the row as we write out so if we write to to the first so let me just show you if you write to e1 then the next time we want to write to e2 and then we want to write to e3 so we've got every time we write out we've got to move our counter down one so we set our counter equal to one and then after we write the value out we basically say row equals row plus one so row equals row plus one if you're not familiar with this it's basically just adding one to row so the equals here is actually an assignment it's basically saying row now equals row plus one or row will be assigned to whatever the outcome of the right hand side of the equals so in other words the equals is assignment and we're going to have five here because five is the column that we're writing out to and this should write out everything so all we've got to do is call 
write data and give it our collection. Now just comment out this one because we don't need it. So let's just go here and see if this works okay. And just bring this across and let's just run this code. You can see it wrote everything out correctly. Now if we wanted to write out the header as well, for example, what we can do is we can actually read from the first one and we can just change this so that it says or i equals one. So in other words, if i equals one, we want to add that to our collection as well. So let's go back here and let's run the code again. And you can see that it printed students at the very top and that it printed the rest of the data. So that's basically how you read and write from a collection to a worksheet. Now, one question people often have, and you probably have it as well, is what happens if I wanted like to read more than one column? So if you want to read more than one column, what we need to do is use a class. And we'll be seeing that in a later video. And so with the class, we basically can store data or lots of different fields about our current students or whatever we're tracking the data on. And we'll see that later in this series of videos on the collection in Excel VBA.